passion, drive, and patience. The formula of winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything for you to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED lights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has it covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices that you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP it needs to be and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Again, ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. You what? I said I know everything that's going on. I can't hear you. If I snap my fingers right now, you'll forget that you were ever gay. I saw that video. It's like the joke, you know, does your mom know you're gay? And you're like, I'm not gay. Like, yeah, but does your mom know you're gay? It's like a, that type of joke, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But whatever. it's kind of brilliant, though. Sure. All right. The more you fight it. The Are you more ready or what? Okay. Bitch, do, do not even act like you're trying to rush me. I'm ready to hit the music at any point. I'm literally oh, wait, waiting go on ahead. you. All right. Ready? Three, two, one. I'm recording. I've already been recording. No, stop. You can't. I was never gay. Okay. No, I was never gay. Sure. You can't just st state something, then snap your fingers, and then be like, is it? I was never gay. If you say so. I, I, I love that joke more than anything in the world because the more you fight it, the more it's true. Welcome to the Loner and Stoner podcast. Uh, I am your host. I'm the stoner. I am indeed stoned. We are joined by the loner. He is indeed alone. Um, for some reason, he loves this joke, this are you gay joke. Uh, let me play it one more time from the top. Here you go. If yeah. I snap my fingers, you forget that you were ever gay. I was never gay. Exactly. Wait, no, stop. Yes. No, stop. You can't, I was never gay. Okay. No, I was never gay. Sure. You can't just <laughs> state something, then snap your fingers, and then be like, I was never gay. If you say so. It's it it's it's a brilliant fucking joke. It just it it's not. It's not, loner. It it's not. It is. It's really it is not. It's literally like a joke saying like does your mom know you're like, you know, hey, are you gay? It's like, uh, does your mom know you're gay? And you're like, uh, no. And you're like, ah, 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 ah your mom doesn't know you're gay. Like, what the No, it's fucking stupid. It's like sending fireworks video to my phone. It it's it's whoa. I almost said a, a not socially acceptable word there. Um, uh, what, the F word for gays? No, I almost said the slow word for, I mean, yeah. Oh, you're talking like <laughs> to slow my engine slow down. engine down. Yeah, it's it's very slow my engine down type mentality. It's very slow my engine down type of um jokes. Yeah. The joke is a slow my engine down type of joke. No, it's not. A, <laughs> it's, it's brilliant. It's a brilliant ass joke. And... Do you want to know that this joke, you know what the term gaslighting is, correct? Yeah. I don't no, necessarily I, I just, know if I like it, but um, gaslighting. You, gaslighting what, is a form of psychological abuse or manipulation in which the abuser attempts to self-doubt the victim's mind. Yes. So, typically, gaslighters are seeking to gain power and control over the other person by distorting reality and forcing them to question their own judgment and intuition. But we've, uh, I don't, do you want to know the brilliant thing about gaslighting? We've what? all done it and we don't even know it. Oh, of course, dude. Of course. You want to know the best gaslighters out there? You want to know who one of the best gaslighters <laughs> in the world is? <laughs> well, I got to hear. <laughs> um, what? 
and 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 he was the gaslighting before gaslighting was a bad thing. Okay, does that make sense? But are you, are I, I would say Taylor? Bubba. Oh. <laughs> Bubba has been gaslighting since before gaslighting was gaslighting. Does that make sense? Okay, okay, but I, he's the king right. of flipping something, is he not? I'm yeah, not talking can... bad. I'm just being real. He's the king of, of 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 diverting the heat, of flipping the heat, of flipping the script, whatever you want to call it, uh, gaslighting. Uh, he is the king of it. But I look like a complete asshole because you were like, who is the king of gaslighting? And I said, um, Hitler. Um, I said Hitler. And then you say Bubba. So I, I don't know. I, they're... That purposely was not done to, to take shots at all. It, I, I promise it was not. Oh, no, I, you're looking. You're looking way too deep into this. Extremely way too deep. So, anyways, you know what, Pat? No, here you go. I, you know, no. I got an idea for you. Here you go. Does this help you out? What? It's your restart. Oh, I'm not deleting it. I'm just restarting the show for you, so you can change topics. You know. <laughs> Oh, welcome to the Loner and Stoner uh, podcast here. Yeah, yeah, yippee-yo, blah, 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 blah. You uh, if you want to get a hold of us at any time, call or text us, 813-906-8806. Once again, leave us a voicemail or shoot us a text message at 813-906-8806. What was that, Tuttle? I'm, I'm off because you were so goddamn late. Dude, I got a lot going on. Okay, but at the same time, like something has changed when it comes to our work situation. Because, like, I don't want to ever bother you. And, like, you're, it almost feels like you have this superiority of complex towards me right now because, like, you had a great couple of weeks. And no, now I'm it's like, just like you the said. Low man on the no, there's just some changes happening at work. Um, you're not low man on the total. No, I, I'm just my, my I'm getting forced. We don't want to get into I'm this saying. yet. You know, I, th I feel like we're, 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 we're too early on, not into the show, too early on into the stages uh, with work um, to be talking mm -hmm. about anything. But there's some slight changes happening of which uh, I'm going to be putting a little bit of uh, more time, effort, uh, you know, everything, just a, a little bit more. I should say a lot mm -hmm. more, a lot more involved into this. So that that's it. All so right. don't feel any which way you're good. Hey, can I ask you a question? Yeah. So this past weekend, Shelby was over at the house and um, I've noticed this time and time and time and time again. She is a certain type of person when it comes to this. And I am the complete opposite okay mm -hmm. and what i'm talking about is i'm trying to think before you even like, oh you would never guess, guess it. it you would never okay. guess it. i don't think but um are you a zipper and i'm not talking about a zipper on an article of clothing i'm talking about a zipper on a bag a zipper on a purse a zipper on a suitcase um are you a zipper open type of person or a zipper close type of person well so the, okay. When Shelby comes over here, she may take all of her stuff out of the bag, okay? So the bag is just empty. But she'll mm -hmm. store the bag away with the zipper open. And I'm okay. the complete opposite. I, I every, If I look around right now, I have uh, my pot purse, I have my personal bag, uh, my backpack, my headphone case next to me, uh, all of which are closed. I am a zipper clothes type of person but I'm shelby's to the point where out. even when she comes over with her bag filled meaning she'll have her clothes for the weekend with her the bag is still open another person who is a zipper open type of person i realized this last weekend i gave lummox a ride from the bubble us fun show gave him a ride over to uh who is now sos rick you know, used to be Tire Choice. Now he's SOS Rick. Gave Lummox a ride to SOS Rick Automotive's shop. Lummox is a zipper open type of person. Bag, pack, open. Zippers, open. Big pocket, open. Little pocket, open. I am the complete opposite. I said I have to have every zipper completely sealed tight 100%. I know why. Why? You're afraid of being abandoned. What? Yeah. 
do you, or do you want me to do you want to hear me out of on course why i'm i'm com- because you have to feel guarded that is one reason why you have zippers closed when there's nothing in them number two you're afraid that somebody's gonna leave you or they're not wanting to be around you and that's why you have to have the zipper closed so they can't escape okay <laughs> this has gone ah. like so deep i was not expecting this uh, are you a no. zipper closed or zipper open type of person or do you not pay no mind I don't even wear underwear, and the only time I know that my zipper is down is when I get a cold breeze but, on my ball. Uh, everybody is a closed zipper when it comes to the zipper on your pants. Okay, nobody no, walks I, around that's purposely. Much I care about zippers. Okay, nobody walks. Around, okay, nobody walks around purposely with a zipper open. Like we're just, no. That's just the fucking facts. But people will walk around purposely with their backpack zipper open. Are you that yeah. type of person? I would never grab my backpack and okay. put it on my back with the zipper wide open. Never oh, have no, I ever, never not, will I. You're not a trusting person either then. What, what, how about I'm just like organized and efficient? No, you're afraid that somebody's going to steal something from you that is valuable. Well, yeah, Which shouldn't most people be afraid you. that you're going to lose something valuable to you? But, yes, you should uh, financially and not want to have physical things steal, stolen from you. But if we're talking about the mental psychiatric part of it is that you are – you don't trust people. Okay. No, I mean uh, you you were asking a question. I'm sorry if I'm I don't think a it makes sense. Deep, and you want to know why that you're you're kind of standoffish with my opinion is it kind of cuts a little deep. That's why. No, I think it, it doesn't make sense. I, I think it's it's a very surface level question of do people oh, have no. your backpack open or closed? Are you like the, does zipper does a zipper mean anything to you? And and here you are trying to tell me I have abandonment issues. And trust issues. Well, I, you asked the goddamn question. So are you I, a zipper you open or closed? What are you? <coughs> what What am I? I Sorry, we're getting I, high here, dude. It's the Loner and Stoner show. I'm going to get stoned. It, it, it's, it's whatever, like, because there are going to be times that I'm just going to close the zipper, and there are going to be some times that I don't close the zipper. I I. All right, whatever. Um, about no, this question, uh, it, it's all good. It's all good. I got the answer I'm looking man, for. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. No, it's there good, dude. I, situation. I, I completely fucking get it, dude. The, like, you know what I'm saying? I, I am good. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> you don't sound good at all. I'll be fine. Um, let me ask you another question. Can you okay. get in your car and drive somewhere without a drink? Yeah, I cannot. But, uh, if I'm starting my truck or the bike, it don't matter. I will have a drink with me. I'm not talking about an alcoholic drink, not a Jameson, not a rum and Coke. No, no. I will have water. a goddamn Gatorade. Uh, water would be the end of the list unless it's a flavored water. But, yeah, I will have some type of fluid on me if I'm driving a vehicle. I will not start a vehicle. In fact, there is time and time again that I will start the truck to go to pull out the driveway, realize I don't have a drink on me, and run back into the garage to grab myself a, no. a, a cold something. Why Why is that? I like, don't know. I, mean, I really don't know. My father's the same way. I, I think it's a thing I've, I've picked up from him over the years, um, you know, just growing up with him, getting in the car. He's got his drink. Now, his will be a water, but, you know, mine's normally a soda pop. Gatorade. Gatorade normally. It's normally a Gatorade. Right now, I'm addicted to these damn sour grape apple Gatorades. It's not really sour apple. It's like a green apple Gatorade. It tastes like a damn Jolly Ranch is what it tastes like. Yeah, no, I tried one of those. You're, you're absolutely yeah, right. It tastes it, it just does. like a Jolly Rancher. Like, I can't get enough of it. I think it's like a green apple. I don't remember. I got it in front of me. Okay. Uh, apple Burst. Apple Burst Gatorade. I can't get enough of it. So you you talk about having a drink. All right. I, I could see where you would absolutely have to think about having some, just some type of hydration with you. If you're going to like drive 
what, 40 or 50 miles where it's like desolate either way. Well, and my thing is like, I'll pass a gas station, but you know me, I'm not fucking stopping at a gas station. You know what I mean? That same Gatorade that I just paid, you know, a dollar ten for uh, from Sam's Club is going to cost me fucking, you know, almost four dollars at a gas station, three dollars at a okay. gas station. So I'm not doing that. It was just the fact that I got to have a drink. Now, if 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 I'm on a road trip and I have no no, no choice, if it's no drink or gas station drink, you best believe I'm stopping at the gas station. OK, so what if um, you're just driving to the store to get uh things to drink oh, like if i'm going like, grocery know, shopping at sam's club yeah i have a drink with me okay but like would you be able to make that trip if you didn't have anything to take with you is what i'm saying um, or would you just get water out of the sink and a cup and bring I would, it with yeah you? i would bring something there's 100 something is coming with me water out the sink a cup something mm. is coming i will not drive without a drink I'm telling you that, that right now. That that definitely relates to trust issues. This too, For, okay. This the uh, more abandonment and trust issues. Well, I mean, I mean, you are not trusting that there's going to be something to hydrate oh, you. Once at again, all I'm being efficient you. and saving my money and being proactive and knowing I need a drink. See, we, we look at things differently. It's all right. It's all right. Okay. Well, I mean, have you ever wanted to just go into life and just, you know, see what, you know, the day gives you? No. No. I would much rather plan my day, and whether I stick to that mm -hmm. plan or not, that's fine. Like, if I go on vacation, I have a little itinerary. Now, I may not stick to that itinerary. I may not do one fucking thing on that itinerary. So you're never surprised in but your life. But no. I have a backup. If there's nothing else going on, I could always, boom, fall back to my backup. The itinerary is right here in my back pocket. Boom, pull it out. Here you go. I have stuff to do for every hour of the day if I choose to go that route. But if the day takes me somewhere else and I'm gone all day and I don't hit any of the things on my itinerary, that's fine, too. But I, you got to have some type of plan in action, whether you 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 utilize it or not. You you got to have a plan. Have you? When was the last time you left the house and you did the the bro dude basics? Okay, what's that? Phone, wallet, keys, nothing else being brought with you. Oh, never in my life. <laughs> why though I, ever like, since i started never in my life i, I guess we can just uh, we'll equate this to me owning owning my own vehicle or you know driving your own car mm -hmm. that's kind of when you know freedom begins if you will you know you're away from your okay. parents reach you have your own vehicle you're responsible for your own stuff um okay so, so so since then i could say i don't never i don't think ever have i just got my keys my phone and my wallet and started the truck and said uh i'm just gonna drive or I'm just gonna go and go because my other my, my other shoulder, my other voice goes, Go where, Colton? Where the fuck are you gonna go? Like, have a plan. Okay, I'm gonna go. So then I might say, Hey, I'm gonna go to the beach. Once I get to the beach, I can figure out where I wanna go, but I'm going to the beach. Like the plan is the beach. I never just have no plan. I don't but know how people isn't live like that. that. Boring though, isn't no. that boring? Did you hear that thunder? Yeah, I did hear the thunder. I wasn't sure if the mic picked it up or not. It it, it did. Okay. Barely. I don't know if the audience will be able to hear it, but I could hear it because I was wearing headphones. But what I'm saying is, like, I remember when even in my 20s and stuff, I would just get up. I'd grab my, my little um, brick Motorola, Samsung, Nokia phone, whatever it may be, Put in my pocket, have my wallet, and have my keys. Uh, make made sure that I had some money and stuff, and that was it. And I I just rode around until I found something to to fucking do. No, I had something to do already planned. There was no riding around. Now now I might ride around. You know, of course it's fun. You're young. You get in your car. You want to go for a drive. Like yeah, but the plan was to go for the drive does that make sense it wasn't a, it wasn't a spur of the moment thing so yeah I, i've drove around aimlessly with with no destination of course but my plan was to drive around aimlessly with no destination Here, so I'll, I'll i'll 
I, I'll tell you what I what is the most freeing thing in the world that I do. Okay, I get up. I usually get up around five o'clock, and that's that's just because of doing morning radio for twenty plus years. I just get up. I mean, Colton, you can even attest we'll be up late, and I'm still up like five, six o'clock. Yeah, not me. Every morning. And it sucks. It's a curse, and it's also a gift. But uh, I will get up because I won't go on my walk slash run in the morning if I don't just get out of bed and just go, okay? I put on my shoes, socks, uh, you know, uh running shorts, whatever. And I don't, I do not even bring my phone now or my wallet or my keys. I bring my, my little pocket knife. That's, that's the only thing I bring with me. And you're saying this makes you feel the most free you've ever felt. Yeah. Because guess what? I'm not available. I I know. I, I know. I mean, I probably would regret like if I got like some, but you know, the area I'm running in uh, or walking around, it's a pretty nice area. So it's not like I'm going to get shot or robbed. No, you'll in, be good. In those areas. You'll be good. So what I'm saying is it's just nice to be a way that like nobody can reach me unless they run into me on the street. And I know a lot of people that are listening to this probably think that this is a bunch of like hippie ass bullshit or whatever, but it is. It's so nice. No, I could see it. I could see it. It's the same feeling you get on a motorcycle. You know, you're not on the phone. You're not, well, not supposed to be, um, you know, you're, <laughs> you're not drinking water. Or, well, not supposed to be. You're not uh, smoking. Weed, not supposed to be, you, you know, you, you know, you got the correlation. Okay. Let, let's just skip upon. Uh, hey, do you tip on takeout? Uh. <laughs> No, I mean, okay. If I got a dollar in my wallet, I may give him a buck. But, like, let's but say you ordered no. real takeout, though. Like, I'm not talking about like you ordered a bullshit like takeout. A Chinese or a, like no, a like you ordered Outback Steakhouse. I think everybody's familiar with an Outback or an Olive Garden or something like that. And you ordered, mm -hmm. you know, that that level, like okay, something and nice, that, something nice, that, where you know you don't want to yeah. be like dressed like a bum. I mean, you could be, but not like some fucking high end shit. You know, like Outback, uh, uh, Olive Garden. I can't think of anything. You know, on that. You know, what's what's really really cool is that like Outback or like Chili's or Applebee's yeah, or stuff whatever. Like that. Maybe. Do you tip on takeout? Yeah, they um. They got that little, if I will say what will make me definitely leave a tip is if they got a little, if they have a door just for takeout pickups. Okay. So this is I'm the saying? thing. If they're providing me a service, I have no problem. Okay. Let me start off by saying this typical takeout. If I have to walk in and grab it. So meaning like I go to mm -hmm. them. Okay. Uh, let me think of a place where that, uh, fuck, I can't think of something off the top of my mind anyways, but somewhere I have to physically go in and get it. Okay. Mm -hmm. At that point, the waitress slash waiter is not really serving me. Um, yeah, they're not serving me. They're not, they're not. Okay. They're not. They're, no, they're handed, they the are, kitchen did though, the work, right? the staff or the kitchen, the line cooked, whoever the hell prepped it and cooked it and bagged it. Okay. Now the waitress mm. is literally bringing it to me and cashing me out. I I typically give them between five and ten percent. Uh, now, yeah, if I could see that. Okay, so then good, I'm fair. Now, if they're bringing it out to me curbside, a Longhorn More. Steakhouse, something like that, where I pull up, call you, tell you, you know, I'm in spot number four. I'm here in the white beat up piece of shit truck in spot four. You can't miss me. These dents are fucking shining because I do keep it clean. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. and then they say, okay, Mr. You know, Mr. Lee, we'll bring it to you, blah, blah, whatever the hell, you know, uh, then it, it's 10 to 15%. But the, I will never, I shouldn't say never, but I have never found myself tipping takeout 20%. Is that what you're supposed to do? Or? Well, I think tipping is 20% here in the States for the most part, right? Like, isn't that like, kind of like mm. the industry standard is they expect you to tip yeah. 20%. That's why when you get a lot of these, uh, uh, receipts, they'll already have 20% built into it. You know, you just literally copy and paste. Um, so yeah, I think it kind of is the standard, but I, my question to you is, yeah, is it the standard for takeout as well? Uh, no, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, it, okay. So this, this is another question. Um, 
do you will you tip a subway sandwich artist extra like if he hooks you up? First off, it's not a fucking artist. Okay, there's no there's there's no art involved. There's no there's not there is not a sandwich artist. Okay, they can dress it up as they want. You can shine the shit as much as you want, but you're not an artist. Okay, (laughs) first and foremost, um. And, and, and same thing, the tip there, uh, typically no, because, uh, no, actually no, I don't. What? What, what the fuck? You're right, you I'm just, I'm thinking about it, and you're, no, I don't. I don't. Why, though? I don't I mean, know. I will say, when I do tip you? places, when I'm tipping in 5 to 10% for when I go in, or 10 to 15, whatever I'm uh, being, you know, curbside, or between 20 to 25, sometimes even 30, uh, that's pushing it. Normally, it's about 25 for if I sit dine-in. Uh, I will say, I never tip on card. I carry cash specifically to tip, and you know no. that. I do do that. Okay. So I think that helps the person a little bit too. So maybe I only gave you 10% tip on your takeout, but I gave it to you in cash. In cash. Yeah, you don't have to wait for it. Now, but you seriously do not like tip the subway I don't think artist? so. I don't think so. Like if I pay cash, Dude, I leave my change. Crazy. I leave my change if I pay cash. But that's it. You, I thought Subway people made uh decent money compared to like okay, um, but, no, but like they are basically just following your orders. They'd be like, "What do you want?" Da, yeah, da, da, but, da. but they're not uh, based off of not tipping. Enough? It's not a tipping structure. The waiters and waitresses uh, are making three, four dollars an hour in Florida because uh, under minimum wage is what I'm getting at. Because it's based on a tipping structure. If you're being a sandwich artist or whatever the fuck you want to call yourself, you are already getting at artist? least at least minimum wage. What about Chipotle? Your Same burrito thing. Artist. All those people are no. getting. Yes, those people are not making three or four dollars an hour. Those people have to be paid at How least minimum know? wage. How do you know? Because they're not considered waiters or waiters. But that's where the tipping agency has gone too far. Money. They have their. They fu- can. Oh, don't get me wrong, dude. I grease palms. There's a difference. <laughs> like, okay, so say you go to Chipotle and this person is stuffing your burrito bowl or your burrito. I'll try to hook them up on the heavy. side. Okay, okay. So, I mean, what I'm saying is that if you're getting hooked up, you're going to hook them up as yeah. well, too. No, you're right. You're a right. Little bit. You're right. But, like, as far as the standard experience or maybe slightly better than standard experience, no. I'm, I'm No, I'm not tipping a sandwich artist. Sorry. Um, what like if I pay cash, you can have my coins, but that's it. Five guys I order on the app. Uh, once again, you tip places that you go to frequently, I right? So bastards. I go to five guys often, like a lot. Um, and this is my, this is my thought process with five guys. Okay. I tip them the dollar 12 or something like that. Okay. But I go in there with my fucking Yeti and I fill up a fountain drink full to the brim. <laughs> So, you know, the fountain drink probably costs two fifty. I'm not paying for it. I'm tipping you the dollar twelve, dollar sixteen, whatever it is. It's a wash in my eyes. I fucking I I will eat five guys, but I fucking despise five guys. Why? You don't Colton, you're the cheapest motherfucker I know, and you are not going to say that they're not way overpriced. Yeah, yeah, I, but I get two meals out of it, so I don't, I don't look at it that bad. Like I'll get the regular size hamburger, which is two patties, and a large Cajun fry. And yeah, you're right; it's probably eighteen bucks. Um, and do you, but if I get two meals know, out of it, it's not as bad. But do you know, like, you know, everybody's like, "Well, they they fill up the bag with the fries." Mm-hmm. Do you, do you realize what the the cost? And what they're actually like making but dude, on the that's, fries. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, everywhere. The, the fries are an, is an illusion to make you feel like you're getting more than what you're actually getting, but you're really, really not. Of course. I mean, isn't that like everything? I'm, I'm just saying, I, I just, it's a good burger. Don't get me wrong. I just don't think it's taste as what it, cost and i would agree hey there's a new restaurant coming over here there's a few actually one is um 
Guy, uh, Guy Fury, whatever the hell, has got a chicken joint coming. Oh, is he doing a flavor town? Oh, no, he's doing the chicken. Yeah, and that's actually in your your hood, right? Yeah, yeah, that's literally right here. Like, it, it's, it's. I wouldn't say walking distance because uh, nothing's really walking distance. Yeah, it's spread but, out. But, uh, I mean, but... it's, it's, it's right here. It's literally right here. The other thing they're building is a soda store. And I was actually trying to research it right now. I forget what it's called. Fizz, Riz, Jizz, something like that. Um, um, it's a fo- it's a it's a soda a swig swig swig. Okay, and I, it's a soda spot. Apparently, it's big like uh, other places uh, in the country, but it's a, it's called Swig, and they sell you like drinks, and you can pour your own stuff into. It. If anybody's been to a Swig, please get a hold of me, please. I'm curious just to see if it's worth it. If it's worth me even trying, uh, just shoot me a text or shoot the show a text here at eight one three. Nine zero six eight eight zero six. I'm asking for those that have been to a swig, which I think is some type of soda shop. If you could just message me, if you bring, you know, if you go there, if you bring your kids there, whatever it may be. You guys know I have a palate of a twelve year old, so would I like it? Please let me know. Eight one three nine zero six eight eight zero six. You're saying so something, Tuttle? To, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I would, I would love to. Um, well, one of the things related to that, I, I saw because. I, I watch a lot of the, uh, you know, the cooking network or food network or whatever it may be, because I, I used to watch it with my mom all the time and, uh, they got the soda shops where they actually make the soda in front of you. Like they, the Coca-Cola syrup and all the ingredients, and then they infuse it with the, uh, the soda water and stuff. And they, they say that you cannot be how a, a a handmade coke tastes is that what this is i i don't know if it is because if it is i mean that would be pretty badass i don't know i i really i don't i don't know i'm curious to find out but i i, I do not know um also uh, related to guy fieri's uh chicken restaurant uh do you think it's going to be better than this season instacart has your back to school as in they've got your back to school lunch favorites like snack packs and fresh fruit and they've got your back to school supplies like backpacks binders and pencils and they've got your back when your kid casually tells you they have a huge school project due tomorrow Let's face it, we were all that kid. So first call your parents to say I'm sorry, and then download the Instacart app to get delivery in as fast as 30 minutes all school year long. Get a $0 delivery fee for your first three orders while supplies last. Minimum $10 per order. Additional terms apply. Achieving a gorgeous grin from home isn't a total mystery with Bite Clear aligners. Just don't be surprised if all of your sleuthing friends start asking, what's your secret? Begin by ordering your at-home impression kit today for only $14.95. Bite Clear Aligners are doctor-directed and delivered to your door. Treatment costs thousands less than braces. Plus, they offer flexible financing, accept eligible insurance, and you can pay with your HSA FSA. Get 80% off your impression kit when you use code WONDERY at Byte.com. That's B-Y-T-E dot com. Start your confidence journey today with Byte. Hey, Prime members. Have you heard... You can listen to your favorite podcasts ad-free. Good news! With Amazon Music, you have access to the largest catalog of ad-free top podcasts included with your Prime membership. To start listening, download the Amazon Music app for free or go to amazon.com slash ad-free podcast. That's amazon.com slash ad-free podcast to catch up on the latest episodes without the ads. And that one chicken joint that me and you went to that one time where they, um... Oh, I've been back. They actually bottled their own Kool Aid. Oh no, I haven't back hand. there. I think they're out of business. <laughs> I thought you meant the one in Zephyr Hills that had the AC set to like eighty six. Oh no, that one was really good. But good food. Man, they're, but yeah, I've been back. Their mild is really hot. Yeah, I've been back, and guess what? The first thing I did when I walked in, I went straight to the, I went straight to their fucking thermostat on the wall. Right. <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this. So, so I walk in the restaurant, right? And last time I was there, dude, that shit was hot. You were there with me. Uh, yeah, I, was I think my, my boyfriend Richie was with me. Chicken. Yeah. And we go there and uh, no bullshit. The AC is set to like 86 and it's like running 87 in there. It was hot and we're eating hot chicken. And uh, I turned to the boys and I said, next time I'm here, the first thing I'm doing is turning this fucking thermostat down. So uh, I literally like a week ago, I go over there, right? I walk in, I go to, I go straight to, before I even order my food, I go straight to the thermostat to go turn it down. They got that bitch down to 72. I was so oh, happy. Well. I was like, oh, 
nice. I can okay. I, I can stay. I can stay and hang out. I can stay and hang out. So that was cool. Uh, I'm gonna play. But, Go ahead. That that one chicken spot that we went to. Remember, like they they didn't even have a soda machine. It was like they had bottled Kool Aid. Yeah, we, uh, yeah, we bottled our own Kool Aid that's yeah. in the fridge. Yeah, and it wasn't a hood spot either. Like, you know, you think of a hood no. spot that does that. No, like this place was trying to be, be bougie and rich and just like, you know, super hoity toity. And they got bottled fucking Kool Aid. So, yeah. Uh, I got a voice clip here from the 520. I have no idea what it says. It just says audio clips. So we're going to play that first. First on right. today, seller appearance by Tuttle on today's show. Then, um, Colton, the reason why they appreciate the message with. I know who this is. So this is Who Scout. Is this is Scout. I recognize voices oh, okay. very well. I got you. Scout from Scout and Big Gulp. Uh, I'm going to crank this volume all the way, but it is tough to hear. So see if you can get yeah, by. It it's, kinda, it's, it's 22 yeah, it seconds, is. all right? 22 seconds from the top. Here we go. First, let me say, seller appearance by Tuttle on today's show. Did you get that or no? No, I did okay, not. So she said, first, let me say, stellar performance by Tuttle on today's show. Then, um... Colton, the reason why they appreciate messing with you is because you have parents that are together and that we're there together. The people, the reason they're messing with you is because you have parents that are together and still together. Me, that is, sorry. Okay, I got you. Vulnerable children oh, that, that part we're there together. They create on weak and vulnerable children from like single parent homes or broken homes, or bad situations. Oh, they pray I know on, so she's about. talking about as an altar boy. boy we talked yes. about recently, I was an altar boy and how I never got picked on uh slash um chosen <laughs> i guess <laughs> from any of the of the of any of the pastors or priests or fathers <laughs> um so she's saying it's it's not has nothing to do with with my looks or nothing to do with that. it's the fact that i uh they knew i came from a complete home not a broken home with a father in the picture a mother in the picture still together doing strong yeah. and that we were a solid family that's what she's saying here hold on five yeah. more seconds let's hear it yes yeah, just parents they knew that, so that's why they left you alone. That's why they left you alone. Okay. <laughs> she ends up with, thank you, Scout. I I love you all so much. <laughs> I mean, that makes like, sense. Oh, let me turn the back down here. Yeah, it, it does make sense, though, right? Sense. Yeah. It does make sense. Um, so, Scout and Big Old, thank you. I absolutely love both of you. Uh, I'm hearing you guys are back in the rig together, so that's awesome. Uh, yeah, wishing you two that. nothing but the absolute best. They got two uh, French little bulldogs or French Frenchies, right? I think, yeah, yeah I, French think I think they have two now. Yeah, they have two. Uh, another one from uh, the 561. What's up, Loner and Stoner? Like the show. Uh, when did y'all start smoking weed, and why and how did it happen? Looking forward to the response. Uh, I'll start it off. I started smoking uh, probably a little too early. I was uh, 14 going on 15. Uh, I did make – this is how it happened for me. I was pretty damn good at soccer. I was the only freshman, uh, and when you're a freshman in Florida, you're about 14 years old. I was the you only freshman the to make the varsity team, correct? So yeah. now I'm 14 years old and hanging with all the 17 and 18 years old varsity players. And, uh, I mean, really, that's just that's just what it boiled down they to. They initiated uh -huh. you early. Yeah, exactly. And that's kind of how it started for me was, um, yeah, I was playing with the older kids, playing soccer with the older kids, obviously hanging out with the older kids, getting invited to go to the parties with the old ki older kids. So 14, 15 years old, I'm a freshman. Uh, I tried smoking weed for the first time. Quite frankly, I loved it, and it has been uh, a daily habit of mine, good, bad, or indifferent, for the last mm -hmm. uh, shit. How can long? I, can I? Can I? Can I bring up something? Ten, you know, fourteen if, years. Oh, can can I bring up something? If you don't want to talk about it, but I I um, it, it gave me a lot of respect for your mom. Um when you were talking about because you've talked to me about like when you first started smoking weed and your parents found out correct correct and your mom was like you're never getting any more allowance from us if yeah. you're gonna make your if you if you want money you need to make your own money because we're not contributing correct to and so like that. uh you you mow the yard or whatever and you get 15 bucks for mowing the yard you no longer are getting fifteen dollars cash from us. We will give you uh, fifteen dollars uh, if you go to the movie with your friends. We will buy your movie ticket. If you go to wherever you know you're going to GameStop to play with your friends for Friday night GameStop, uh, we will give you fifteen dollars on a GameStop card. But yes, the cash. As soon as she found out I was smoking weed, the cash was done. And I'm not talking about like not just cash given to me. Like yes, like you said, the the uh, 
not the errands, the chores and the, the money from that that's earned, right? No more cash. Yeah. Cash was done. So, and I do, I respect like, my mom we'll greatly you for if that. You want, if you want something, we'll buy it for you. Yeah, right? pretty much. Right. Yeah, like, like, yeah, you're owed 20 bucks from us this week because you, uh, whatever the fuck, you know, mowed the yard and picked up the dog shit. So you're owed 20 bucks from us this week. You're 15 years old. You're in high school. Uh, we owe you 20 bucks for this week. You know, you're probably going to spend it this week with your friends, and that's fine. However, you are not spending me and your father's hard-earned money on drugs. And in their eyes, marijuana was a drug. And I was 14, 15, 16 years old, whatever it was, and I shouldn't have been smoking it. And quite frankly, they're right. How, how did you feel? Okay, now you're saying it's right. And oh, at the time it, it sucks, it, dude. Of course. Oh yeah. Were you of mad course. As shit? Well, dude, you're at that point. You know I'm a wheeler and dealer. So at that point, I'm trying to make friend make uh, deals with the friends and saying, "Look, man, I know you got twenty bucks from your I'll mom cash. You I got twenty shit. bucks on a, on a on a on a gift card. How about this? Let's uh, you spend all twenty bucks of yours on the pot, and I'll spend all twenty bucks of mine for both of us on GameStop." You know what I mean? Oh, okay. So technically, so he would buy the pot. I'd buy the GameStop. Some something like that. You know what I mean? That's how it would. That's how we would shake it and work it out in the long run. Wait, in a in a long in a long form roundabout way, your marijuana made you a better saver, a better business person. You're probably right because. Because you had to be smart and you had to wheel and you had to be creative. You're honestly, um, you're probably right. Like seriously, you are one hundred percent probably right. So <laughs> that's great. Oh, I hopefully you weren't mad at me bringing that up, but I I I'm always thought we're that good. that was fascinating. No, we're so good. Mike from the nine four one says H R Pat. Back to back shows leading off with weird cat facts. It's really nauseating hearing about a cat getting fucked by a Q tip. <laughs> Stoner, since Shelby is really busy, please send HR Pat all the quote thinking of you, end quote, and the quote, how is your day messages. The bar has been set by Operation Pigmentation going live in the studio. And then he says, HR Pat, circle jerking with HR Pat is an unbelievable admission. You could have been the next Paul Skeens if you weren't so turned on by, by watching you watch yourself. Love you. Yeah. <laughs> the next thing you know, you could have been dating fucking Olivia. What's her name? Olivia Dunn. Oh, yeah. Oh, you could have had it all, Pat. You could have had it all. Uh, from the 408, they say, been listening to the Loner and Stoner show. The show's fine. And I've been listening to more and more other podcasts. I'll listen to you guys over Tig and Bits. In fact, I turned off. For your show today. Well, we appreciate it from the 408, okay. uh, but we do ask you to listen to everybody on the Bubba Radio yeah. Network. So thank you. And I'll get one um, more text message out. Hold on. Vic from Volusia. Okay. Uh, he says, hey, guys, that was pretty funny with the fingering story and the auto-taping of Tuttle Whack-Off session. And he <laughs> says, Weather Adam, which I do have a Weather Adam update. Weather Adam is my boy that is uh, out of Houston and getting a new job. I can announce where he went today. Weather Adam is awesome. I've seen some of his shit before. Anyways, great show. Can't wait till next week, Pods. Love y'all. No homo. No diddy. Vic from Volusia. A uh, little quick, very, very quick update on Weather Adam. Uh, Weather and Adam uh, and I speak through email. He is uh, an officially announced. He is going to be the chief meteorologist out in L.A. So oh, yeah. he, we so were we, right. We kind of called that, we were, right? Yep, like, we called it. He was moving up, moving up markets. So he's moving from Houston. He's officially out in L.A. His first day is September 9th, I believe. Um, so weather out him. Shout out to you. Do dude. your thing out there. And I'm uh, looking forward to more of your funny videos. Is he a single dude? Not that I'm no. asking for myself. No, but... I don't believe so. I was, man. Wife and kids, imagine? actually. I don't know if it's multiple kids or just one, but wife and kids. Okay, but I'm just saying, though, like, what is he? Probably early 30s, maybe? A mm, little older than that. Okay, all right. So you're you're in your mid-30s. You are going to be the weatherman in fucking Los Angeles. Like, I mean, you're getting all types of ass if you're a single meteorologist. Are you, though? Like, is... I feel like the news, I feel like I'm a rare breed at 20 years old, or 30 years old, no, sorry, you are. that most people don't watch the news that are 30 and younger. Um, they could care less. Okay. I, in fact, I think people 30 and above don't watch news. I think cable is done in moms? general, so therefore the news is dying out in general. What about single moms that are like 
you know. I once again, no. I think cable's played out and they don't have cable, therefore they're not watching the news. No. I think most people what? nowadays get their news via Instagram, Twitter, World Star, uh, you know, bullshit like that. But as a meteorologist in Los Angeles, like you 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 have some already great built-in like pickup lines about, you know, moisture, precipitation. Yeah, and he's witty. Wet. He's super witty with it, so that helps too. Yeah. Uh, speaking of people yeah. getting their news from other places, uh, I got a very, wow. very quick 30-second story I'm going to play here. Uh, caption, crack for breakfast on the New York City subway is wild. <laughs> it is showing a woman who is cracked out of her mind, but the, mm-hmm. what, the, what, that's not the part that gets me. The part that gets me is these people around her on the subway – just sit there, minding their own business, as, as if this is normal. That's her call. Of course, doesn't cover her mouth. <laughs> fucking everywhere, dude. It's fucking drool spitting out and shit. She just spit on the floor. She just fucking spit on the floor. Now she's looking over where, making weird faces to the New camera. York, and shit. New York, New York. New York. <laughs> New York. Finally, somebody gets up because she's yeah, looking around and scratching her neck and just fucking tweaking out like crazy. No. What the fuck would you do, dude? How do you deal with that no. shit every day? I've, I've, I, you've, you, have you ever been to New York City? No. You have not. We, me and you really need, it, it's, it's, it's a diff, you feel like you're on a different planet. I bet. That's why I don't know if I have any interest. I mean, I, I would love to visit, but like, how the fuck would I, you want to live there? I've, I've been there maybe five or six different occasions. And I remember the first time, well, the first time I took the subway was with uh, Ron Bennington from Ron and Ron. Yep. Um, he just, he, he was like, listen, I can just give you the best piece of advice. When you get on the subway, no matter how crazy it gets, the best thing for you to do is ignore it. Like it's not even there. Well, and that's exactly yeah. what these people were doing. They were literally just, like I said, on their phone, Looking straight, bullshit, and had nothing to do with this stuff. Because um, they wanted nothing to do with it. Like you said, they were just living their own life, ignoring it one hundred percent. Yeah, and and you have to because you don't know. Okay, so what what good does it do to react to somebody that's obviously mentally disturbed that is smoking crack? On the subway, right? So, do you really think they give a fuck what you think? No, they have nothing to lose. No, they exactly. could care less, that, dude. That's why, in my opinion, it was the best piece of advice that anybody's ever given me about being in a city for the first time was, no matter how crazy it gets, you you don't react unless, like, you get pulled into something. No, you you're right. And no, no, no. You're 100 percent right. I have noticed that about New Yorkers. Uh, they have no problem minding their own business, um, just keeping their head down. I didn't see nothing. I didn't hear nothing. I didn't feel nothing. I'm on my way to work, motherfucker, and I'm on my way home to work to my wife and kids. I got nothing to do with nothing. So I will it, say that. It's it's a pretty good like you know. You're probably still going to face trouble, but I think if you if you take that approach living in New York City, like you're going to be pretty decent, in my opinion. And I agree. I agree. I agree. Um, hey, so, you know, the Rays, mm-hmm. they're all they're 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 all right this year, whatever. But they're uh, they're starting like a new thing. Year. Huh? But not like last year. No, not like though. last year. I think last year they were flirting with 100. I think they ended up with 98 or 99 wins. Uh-huh. Now I yeah. gotta have to check it out myself. Raise record for 2023, 99 and 63. Damn, I was pretty good. Uh, so last yeah. year, anyways, um, they're offering they something this year. No, huh? 13 and no, too. Then they started 13 yeah. and no. Yeah. Um, but where I'm getting at this year is they're offering a little something here towards the end of the year. 
They're trying to figure out how to get fans in the door, and they're giving away free, yes, free tickets to anybody that signs up for this program. Um, I'm a cheapskate. We all know this. A free date, being able to take Shelby out to the Rays game, I'm 100% for it. I think that's awesome. Uh, I have not made it to a Rays game yet this year, and we are on the final, uh, what, fifth of the season. I mean, we're almost damn near done, so I should probably go. But uh, I don't think I'm signing up for this program. Uh, and Jennifer Lee is going to explain it to you here. Field could be easier this baseball season thanks to new facial okay. recognition technology, but not everyone nah. is cheering for this new tech. Nope. Critics. Are nope, right? You're with me, right, Pat? Nope, nope, nope. I already know. Nope. I'll play the story, though. Hold on. Here it is. Coming down. Minute 30. Using serious privacy concerns about the new go ahead entry system. News Channel 8's Georgia MacArthur is at Tropicana Field with the details. So here's how it works. As you approach the scanner, the system automatically recognizes your face, and that's it. You're in. That's it. Literally, you walk up, there's a little scanner. It's recognizing your face, obviously reading your face and scanning your face, um, and then you are welcomed into the ballpark. Your face could soon be a ticket inside the Tropicana Field. Fans heading to a baseball game will notice a new option at the gates, the go-ahead entry feature. This system utilizes facial authentication technology to make a quicker and hands-free ingress experience for fans. So how do you register? Just go on your ballpark app, you click on enroll now, you answer a couple questions, just confirming that you're 18 years or older, and then it's going to take a quick scan of your face. So what's the problem? MLB officials emphasize that the system is secure. We do not store any images of fans in our system. All right, whatever. I'm just going to point, get to the chase here. Um, so they're offering, anybody that signs up for this, they're offering you two free tickets, okay? So if I signed up, I would get, you know, one ticket for me, one ticket for Shelby, and give me the opportunity to go to the game. Um, mm -hmm. My problem with this is, uh, or I shouldn't say my problem, I would be more inclined to do it if the ticket also came with additional um, features. Like a hot dog and a drink? Yeah, not only that, but more so like free re-entry. That would be huge for me. If you're already using my face, you know that I'm not giving my ticket away to anybody, right? Because you're so using... You go out and burn one. Exactly, dude. That That is the way, I think, to get the facial recognition off the ground better for these ballparks for, for everywhere. Not just for baseball parks, for NBA stadiums, for concerts, for anything. Because what they're worried about is people going in there, using a ticket, coming back out, and, and no re-entry because you're scanning that same ticket that's already been scanned, yeah. but they're afraid you're going to sell it to somebody else and blah 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 right but if you're using facial recognition there's no way for me to fucking cheat the system right you're using my face every single time i should be able to come in and out entry yeah uh, the whole duration of of the event at no cost that would I be mean, the way to get you somebody and if i'm being honest you know like they they let people bring a cooler beer into nascar races okay okay so say with the facial recognition that Maybe you're parked out in the parking lot and you wanted to go out and down a, a, a beer or two real quick and then come back in. Exactly. Same same, same thing I'm trying to do, except substitute your substance. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just saying, though. I mean, it, 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 I, I could see that. And I know a lot of people are saying privacy issues. Uh, if you've ever driven through a uh, toll booth or whatever it may be here in the state of Florida, they got your face. You, your your face has already been captured in the state of Florida somewhere. Of course. I was actually trying to look it up right now because I, I remember hearing something about uh, like your face is scanned like, you know, 60 something times a day on your average day. Oh, just yeah, by living dude. your and life and going, you know, driving to work and going to the toll booth at work and the cameras at work that are at your work business building, driving home and stopping at the Wawa to get gas. You're on camera there again. Just I, I thought it was like 60 something times a day. Your face is scanned. What about in America? Check out. What about self all that shit? Dude, that's what I'm saying. No. All that shit. All of it. You an American cannot go anywhere without being on camera between the neighbor's ring to your own ring to fucking, like you said, self-checkout to Wawa, to the gas stations, to the bus stop. It doesn't matter if you're trying to be undercover and, and not use your own and use public transportation. You're going to be on camera there. You will be on camera. If you step outside as an American and go somewhere, you are on camera that day somewhere. 
like a bus, like you like you said, if you, you get on a bus, you're getting camera. videoed. Correct. It does not matter uh, train, what you do. Like you can, doesn't it, matter. It's, okay, go private transportation. Say I want to drive myself everywhere. Okay, I'm gonna drive my own car everywhere you go. Like you said, you're still gonna get uh cameraed. Okay, whenever you go I'll to move. yep toll booths. Not only that, at certain intersections. Businesses, cameras, reach out red to the street, camera. red light cameras. I mean, you will be camera. And at some point, you're going to step out your car to go somewhere, right? To fill up for fuel, to take a piss, whatever it is. You will be on camera. That's just that's just what it is in America at this point. If you're stepping outside, you will be on camera. So privacy, whatever. But yeah, so the, the facial thing to me is if they can get it to where it's free reentry, that would be the way where you could get me to say, you know what? I'd consider this. I'd consider it for sure. Hey, real quick, um, before before we go back to the camera thing, um, you know, I I watch a lot of Dateline, NBC. You ever watch Dateline with the murder? You know, not shows? really. Uh, so, do you think that there is a perfect murder? What do you mean by that? Like, perfect in which way? Not getting caught, and um, I'm not. Like, I'm I mean, not. Yeah, this I'm sure there is. But uh, the only way that it could ever be a perfect murder is if you killed a random stranger that you had never met before. Yeah, correct? you can't tell a single soul. It's got to be a stranger, I'm sure. You can't tell, sell, tell a single soul, I'm sure. And you have to dispose of everything 100%, I'm sure, whether you're feeding that to sharks or boar, something like that. Do boar even eat the bones, too? Yeah, I mean, for the most part, except Eyeballs, the teeth. Teeth, okay. Teeth. So they're still leaving something. But what I'm, but you would also like the reason I'm saying is if you've ever met the person, you still have a connection somehow, some way with that person. Correct. Right? Yeah. Yes. <sighs> yeah. The, once again, it's 2024. Ain't no, but ain't no American getting away with murder anyway. It's just it's not happening anymore, dude. It's not happening. And the husband, husband is always like. The spouse, per se, is always the first, like, suspect, Of right? course. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Speaking of killing people yeah. and stuff here, Florida woman accused of killing a nine-year-old girl. She directed her Rottweiler to attack her. Here's the story here. It's a Fox 35. Nine-year-old Jamaria Sessions. Which, for those that don't know, Fox 35 is out of Central Florida, uh, Orlando. Yeah, yes, sir. Back in June in Montverde. Fox 35 News first brought you the story then as deputies were trying to figure out how she died. And tonight they say they have some tragic answers. Deputies say this woman beat the little girl and instructed her dog to attack her. Fox 35's Marie Edinger joins us live now. So Marie, this woman was the girlfriend of the young girl's dad? Um, hey, can, That's exactly can, right. can you deputies stop her real quick here? I, I'm not saying this, but... Okay, so we we have not said this. So, Colton, uh, what would you think that hearing somebody that, uh, you know, a, put their attack dog on a kid during child abuse, you would think that that's a, um, a white white crime, correct? Rottweiler? No. No? Not a Rottweiler. Pit, okay, what if it was a pit bull? Would it be a different story? No, then? I... No, Rottweiler and Pit. No, I don't think so. We'll see. I think well, Rottweiler I, and Pit Bulls is no. But a dog attack. That, I, what I'm trying to get at is I never thought this would have been a black family that did this. Oh, I didn't even see that yet, to be real with you. No. No, it, I, the yeah, worst it is. case of abuse they have ever seen in Lake County. Jamaria Sessions had two grandmothers who she'd stayed with the in the past, and we spoke exclusively yeah. with both of them today. That's a baby. That's a baby. A beautiful little girl now gone. Of a nine year old baby? Nine. Nine-year-old Jamaria Sessions was found dead in June. Now we know she was tortured and brutally beaten, allegedly by her father's girlfriend, Tashel Martin. This is uh, the worst case of aggravated child abuse we've ever seen. Martin's arrest affidavit says while her other kids watched, she sicked her 103... What? While the other kids are watching? Brought while oh, yeah. Jamaria, then kicked and beat her. There was no reason to hurt my granddaughter. The home was oh, full of ridiculous. security cameras, which deputies say caught the attacks on video. In one video, wow. Martin is heard saying, I'm fixing to kill her, according what? to the affidavit. The world 
needs to know evil when they see it. So her picture needs to be everywhere. Yeah, this bitch needs to rock. If yeah. I had the money, I would invest in a billboard in every state. Yep, fuck this bitch. So the sheriff's office says that was far from the first instance of abuse. Martin is accused of beating her as a form of punishment and making her run with her hands above her head. I don't have the words to describe it. It's unimaginable and completely inhumane. So where was Jamaria's father? The sheriff's office says he left the home because he and Martin were fighting. His daughters have lived with each of their grandmothers in the past. Um, that Both bitch told did me it just to get back at the dude, that's man. That's almost what it sounds like, right? They want custody of the children. And now they want maximum punishment seconds. for the woman accused of killing their granddaughter. You gotta explain to her sister what happened to her sister. She not gonna understand that. She that only six years old. The justice that she deserves is not what the state does. <laughs> She's not wrong. She's not wrong at all. Um, but you didn't get you didn't get what I was saying. Like how that. Yeah, you think like of a dog. You think white. of a dog. Someone stick. I'm gonna stick my goddamn dog on you. You think of yeah. like yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you now. White but trash. I guess I read Rottweiler and 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 thought differently. That's all. That's 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 all. Uh, I'm gonna get two. I'm gonna play two voicemails, and I think we're up out of here, dude. We're coming up on an hour already. So let me get to two voicemails, and after that, we are out of here uh, from the 843. Let's hear it. Hey, guys. Oh. Just want to call and let you know and enjoy the, enjoy the podcast. And, uh, we got to hear this again. Here we go. Here we go. Coming from the top. Turn it up a little bit. Loud and clear from the 843. Hey, guys. Just want to call and let you know and enjoy the, enjoy the podcast. And, um my name's Alex. <laughs> Very clear it is. That's good. That's good. That's good. Hold on. Let's, let's go. We're going to get to it completely now. 20 seconds coming down. Three, two, and one. Podcast. <laughs> and um, my name's Alton. And I'm from, uh, I live in uh, Walterboro, South Carolina. And oh, we're familiar with Walterboro. We drive through it. We're heading out to uh, Somerville and Charleston and all that. North Charleston if you want to get shot. I listen to the main show and y'all's podcast. Whatever time it drops. Thank you guys. Do a great job. Keep it up. Well, Austin, Allison, that part kind of, I'm sorry, it cut off a little bit there, uh, but Austin slash Allison from, uh, I mean, 843 from Walterboro. Walterboro, we appreciate you listening. Uh, we've been up there. It, I mean, yeah, you're cool. You're right there. Our uh, our friend uh, that we know uh, that was in the military, well, Carissa, um, Air Force. Yeah, Air she's Force in Carissa. Jacksonville now. She she's a Floridian and she, now, and she was a Walter Ball resident, I believe. Wait, she was? I didn't know. I don't know. I just mean that <laughs> she was a South Carolina resident. <laughs> yeah, I know that because she came and saw us at the Honky Tonk Saloon in Ladson, South Carolina. Hey, great uh, breakfast there. At the You're hotel. yawning on me. We got one more. We'll get up out of here. All right, here it is. Yo, what up, Colton Tuttle? It's your boy Mike from Naples. I have to say, Mike calls in to the after show, and Mike doesn't normally sound this clear. So, Mike, you sound good as fuck. Whatever you did when you called us and left us this voice clip, uh, you sound good, buddy. Here it is. Good morning. It's your boy Mike from Naples. Love the podcast. Love how it's coming along. The only critique I would have is if you guys could possibly get 55 like an hour of content well mike we're at 101 right now we're still kicking because it seems like you guys always fall between like 38 minutes 40 an hour i know you guys come up with at least an hour because what you guys put out there is getting better and so obviously want to hear more all right. Well, Later, boys. I appreciate it, Mike. Um, and I guess you I, know we took your crit we took your critique, and here we are. We're over an hour. I mean, I I would like to say though, you know, uh, sometimes less is more. Of course. But I'm I'm just, I'm just gonna be honest with you. Like, what if we give you 45 minutes worth of like really really good content, and then everything that was 45 plus was complete dog shit. You're not going to remember the first 45 minutes. You're all going to remember uh, how shitty the last 15 was. Correct. And I agree. 
Um, no. One last South thing before dicks. we get up out of here. No, South not Sodar dicks. dicks. We're good. We're cool with Mike. We got no issues with Mike. Uh, uh, one last I'm... thing from JC. JC is the guy that made our artwork. Uh, that's I should say that is making our artwork for the Loner and Stoner podcast. It's based uh, off the Bob's Beavis and... Burger guy, right? Yep, yep, exactly. He's a Bob's Burger uh, illustrator. Um, he messaged me earlier this week, and I just want to read that off. He said he heard the show yesterday, uh, and please tell HR Pat that I didn't jet his jaw out on purpose. He's referring to the to the logo. Um, no. I basically traced this Beavis and Butthead image, and it worked. Well, I mean, he traced and then added. You know what I mean? He used the trace as a base, and then he added well, from there. It. Um, I will add your pimp ass beard and we'll work on it later today. Smoke a blizzy for me. I have, and then he just talks about when's the last time he may have, may not have participated in anything. So JC, right. thank you for helping us out. We appreciate you helping us with that logo. Um, seriously like that, that, that helps us a lot. So thank you for that. And, uh, no, we know you're good. We know you didn't jut out Tuttle's straw on purpose. We're golden. We're good. No issues right. over here. No heat. We're good. Uh, please be sure did. to give us a call or text at any time, 813 906 What, 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 what? He what? I, well, I didn't, I just said that he did. I don't think he did. He did uh, jot it out. No, he didn't. He just, oh. he just sent us a message about how he just copied the, uh, traced yeah. the beavers and butthead for this, for the, for stock. All right. I mean, that, right. That, that's great. Thank you. Yeah. It's My air conditioner uh, kicked on. That's good to know. That is still working. Good to know. That's good to know. All right, Pat. Uh, why, why, are you, why are you trying to get out of here, man? It's just, it's time. It is it is. Time no, it's us. not. Let's let's do a two-hour show today. No, it's time. It's time. Okay? All right. Oh, we got a new outro? You know, every week I played a different song, and I... I this was the first song I found. Okay? All right. Cool. You've been listening to the Loner and Stoner Podcast on the Bubba Army Radio Network. 